Hello, welcome, good evening, good morning, guten tag, bon venu. Buenos dias. Hi. Konnichiwa. What up, y'all? It's time for Fanfic Friday. And if you've not joined Fanfic Friday previously, you won't know what it's about. So what we do with Fanfic Friday is we put a bunch of suggestions into three, we used to be hats, but now it's bags. We've downgraded, I think, from hats to bags. Well, it's yeah. easier to keep everything in there. And we draw the suggestions out at random, and they can be characters, locations, or scenarios, and we have four, ultimately, two characters, a location, and scenario, and we have to tie them all together in a single cohesive story about the things involved. And often it is not good, but often it is not as not good. Everything sucks and it's bad. Nihilism. Nihilism. We each do a story each in the space of 30 minutes, and uh, that's all we have. But what we have left is a short story about the subjects that we've drawn. And it's a good creative exercise. In the case of me, last week, our uh, booty muscles. My story this week features Mulan from Walt Disney's Mulan and also history, uh, suggested by Joshua Krupp. Which I think I know that name from somewhere, Joshua Krupp. Maybe I just know the name Krupp. Maybe your nightmares. Maybe Joshua your nightmares. Krupp does not sound like like Nightmare on Elm Street material. Freddy Krueger. Joshua is really that... Krupp. Yeah, no. you can make Lord. anything sound scary. I don't think so. I don't think you can make Benjamin sound scary. Benjamin. Sounds Benjamin scary. Barker. He was a killer. You fucked up! No, he fucked up. He killed his wife. That's true. But you did just as bad of a thing. You were wrong. Equally. Oh. Equally on the you moral were wrong. spectrum. On the internet, on the internet. About the same. Yeah. In a video as well, so there's evidence. Yep. Forever. Second character, Amy Schumer. But it was suggested by somebody within our group. Uh, the location is Tony Stark's workshop, and the scenario is playing a drinking game, which is very appropriate for Tony Stark's house. Amy slammed the shot glass down onto the console in front of her, half of it comprised of a giant monitor that displayed various incursion points throughout the globe from both invading scroll forces and clandestine hydra attacks. Various other dots scattered around the highly detailed digital map readout signified various heroic forces fighting back. Iron Man was battling the Ten Rings in China, Captain America was g engaged in fisticuffs with Red Skull in Germany, while Hawkeye was in New York waging war against the public transport system. This is stupid! She slurred incoherently, her neck receding into her shoulders as she winced at the taste of the whiskey. Tony had been stupid enough to leave his booze cabinet unlocked, presumably as some macho attempt at displaying his wealth, or maybe just because a good drink or two took the edge off when the world was about to be destroyed or invaded or given a cosmic reboot for the umpteenth time. Why is the heroes is always fighting crime when they could be fighting the patriarchy? And furthermore, why is it, is it that we aren't heroes? I think you're so, so a hero, Mulan cried out defensively, draping her lithe arm across Amy Schumer's shoulders. Women and girls and other women look at you on the television at the Hulu and say, man, Amy Schumer, I wish I could also make the jokes and the laughing happen after the jokes. I know that I have literally said those words many times at the, the patriarchy Hulu. thing. At the Hulu. <laughs> no. At Why can't Hulu. I make the jokes and make the laughs that come after the jokes? That's what I get out of my Hulu subscription. Frustration. They had met at a local convention for prominent women in entertainment. All the important female role models had been there. Lucy it wasn't Lawless. A very big convention. Lucy Lawless. <laughs> Lucy Lawless, Michelle Obama, Kim Kardashian, and after that they kind of ran out of names, so they started bringing in fictional female characters to balance things out. Mulan and Amy Schumer had bumped into each other at the chocolate fountain and had struck up a conversation after complimenting each other's dipping technique. I don't like to keep it in too long. Also, mind you, don't get any on your fingers. It's sticky as hell, Amy had instructed. That's what she said, Mulan had replied. Their Mulan. eyes. Their eyes had locked intimately. Only a select few were allowed to tell her that's what she said joke around Amy Schumer and be judged worthy for it. <laughs> Mulan had been one of those few. If you defeat the Huns, you get to say that's what she <laughs> that's said. That's right. That's what the whole movie was, the, the goal of that movie was. Yeah. Tony Stark had also been attending the convention, insisting that introducing a young female Iron Man to replace him in the comics made him the most important feminist icon in media today. 
Tina Fey had tried arguing with him, but after a few seconds staring into the cryptic ocean of his eyes, she had buckled and swooned. The whole feminism movement kinda smarted after that one. Later, Mr. Stark had hovered seductively near Amy and Mulan long enough to arouse their interests, and it took a little more than an invitation back to his home in Malibu, specifically to the bedroom they're in, to lure them to their current location. Lure. Lua. Lua. Sadly, before any threesomes could go down, Tony had been called away by his AI assistant Friday to fight the good fight. I'm, I'm like really sad that Pokemon has changed my interpretation of the word lure, because now I'm just picturing like putting Tony up Stark a lure is like, uh, there's a lure at, lure at my Malibu place. Yeah, and he's like, hey ladies, I got a lure up in my place, there's Pokemon everywhere. Didn't you say that he was in China fighting? Yes, I just dis also described. Is it Mulan from China? Yes. Why wouldn't she care about going to help? She's drunk. That's fair. <laughs> I'm just surprised that Mulan wouldn't go. But if she can't drunk, get there, also, like he just was like, "I'm Iron Man. I'm gonna fly she just over has there." A horse. That's true. <laughs> Her horse is probably she has bad. catchy musical numbers and a horse. Sadly, before any threesomes could go down, Tony had been called away by his AI assistant Friday to fight the good fight. Amy had sulked for a good two and a half minutes before Mulan had stumbled upon his collection of hard liquor. Now they were about twelve drinks in. Mulan was sporting one of Tony's Iron Man suits, the helmet pulled back around her attractive eastern features, and Amy was attempting to discern whether or any of his experimental weapons came with a vibrator function. <laughs> it's just... it's not cool, Amy swallowed. Reaching for a slender pink bottle of something and pouring it into a glass, she could have sworn was constructed out of hard light holographic technology. Whatever it was, she was going to pour its contents down the back of her throat. Why is it that is that a vagina... A vagina can't be a hero. I have a vagina. Why can't it be heroic? Is it, is it, is it because I'm a drunks? <laughs> okay. Hey, hey, Mulan snickered, her nose wrinkling as she elbowed Amy thoughtlessly, the suit likely bruising one of her ribs in the process. Amy was too far gone to notice. Let's play Never Have I Ever Never. Have I never, have I ever. Amy's eyes flashed and she danced in place, her hourglass figure wobbling comically. Yeah, that's, that's the best idea since, holy shit, all ideas. Mulan coughed and raised her glass. Never have I ever pretended to be a dude to save China. Mulan drank. Amy's eyes narrowed and then she also drank. What? Wait, when, when did you do that? Mulan leaned in close and hissed the words into Amy's face, more perplexed than suspicious. I did like a while ago. Amy lightly slapped Mulan's face away dismissively. It was like, you can Google it. I everyone thought I had a dick, and then China was okay. It's what? fine. It happened. <laughs> Drink more quickly. She just went over there and, like, flashed one boob to Mal. <laughs> they both drank again, the rules of the game already being eschewed in favor of simply more drinking. Then Amy raised her finger in exclamation. Never have I ever told a joke about my vagina. Mulan drank. She stared expectantly at Amy and waited. Amy's jaw was set in place, her eyes wandering across the room as though deep in thought. Amy? Was it? He got a drink like a ton for that one, M Mulan insisted, accidentally activating her helmet and squeaking in surprise at the sudden intrusion of the armor's heads-up display. She carried on, her drunken voice reaching through the suit's audio system. You make a vagina joke like every other time you talk. Nah. -uh. She just did. <laughs> nah. -uh. She's like, why can't a vagina be a hero? Amy shook her head violently like an upset child. That's, that is not me. That is other comedian. I never. Oh god, how'd you even begin to wear that? She gestured vaguely at the red and gold shape that stood in front of her. That says it's got to give you cooch rash something fierce. Hey oh! <laughs> <laughs> Amy snorted and even Mulan couldn't help but start twitching her ironclad shoulders as she held in a series of chuckles. Hey, never have I ever, Amy announced, skipping Mulan's turn altogether. Never have I ever, ever fucked Tony Stark. They both went to drink and then hesitated. They gave each other a knowing look. But we're totally gonna, they said in unison and drank anyway. Yay! Yeah. Right. The end of the story. Feminism! Mm, kind of. Stark gets laid. Maybe. Maybe. Mulan gets laid. That's way more of Important. a reason to celebrate. Yeah, let's get down to business. So for this week, I had 
I apologize in advance for this story, sort I of. I apologize in retroact re re retrospectively for my... Re 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 retroactively. Yeah, yeah. I guess you have more to apologize Way for more. than I do. So my characters for this story were Larry the Cable Guy, suggested by Kevin Mitchell and Kilgrave. The location was Your House, suggested by Joe Abad. And the scenario is the first character has to help the second character do their homework. I'm kind of glad I got this location because when I saw it, when I was writing down all the suggestions and stuff, I saw your house and I was like, that could be, like, if somebody drew that, they could do something really weird with the prose. And so I drew it, and I'm glad I drew it because I wrote it in a second person present tense um, point of view. So it's kind of strange. You arrive home, feeling a weight remove itself from your shoulders as you step through the door. There are some leftovers in the fridge you've been thinking about all day. Pizza from your favorite local restaurant. That's what you guys had today. Mm -hmm. And past play of the games have been repeating themselves in the back of your eyelids as the minutes painfully ticked past behind your desk. It was the- I never get play of the game. That is not me. <laughs> it was officially the weekend, bitch. Overwatch, junk food, and glorious weed called your name insistently as you toss your keys on a hook near the door and you throw your shoes off in the doorway. However, as your shoes hit the floor, you hear something else in your house. Glorious weed. Glorious weed. Something decidedly uncool voices. The hair on the back of your neck prickles as you- You're saying Larry the Cable's guy's voice isn't cool? The hair on the back of your neck prickles as you feel a sinking sense of dread manifest in the pit of your stomach. Before looking to explore, you hurriedly step out of your pants. You tell yourself that this is in the interest of exploring your place more quietly, but really it's because those pants fucking suck because you never quite lost those couple of pounds you gained, and you haven't had the heart to donate them because you know it's just a matter of time, exercise, and willpower before you're back at that weight. When those three will overlap, no one knows, but when they do, you will be a Grecian goddess. Or god. Can I be a goddess? You can be whatever you want. Okay. Me too. Pushing aside your self-loathing towards your little paunch, you make your way out of the little entrance room and towards your dining area. You grab one of your shoes on the way, unsure how much damage it can do, but if you're a woman and you grabbed a heel, you probably got a decent chance of some minor skull fracture. However, you release the breath you didn't realize you were holding when you see the occupants at your table. You occasionally forget that you've had world-renowned comedic genius Larry the Cable Guy sleeping with you for a few weeks. I do forget that. <laughs> You still remember, you still remember that night when he arrived at your door in the rain, introducing himself as the person you had been in an online relationship with for the last three months, and telling you he wanted to you take things- You fished by Larry the Cable Guy? No, you didn't. Because um, he, he tells you he wants to take himself. things to the next step. Stunned, you agreed because you liked the person you'd been talking to online, so there must be something about Larry the Cable Guy you never knew to make you feel such strong feelings about him when you didn't know that Larry, in a little chat window, was that Larry. Oh. Because he's not being an asshole and being like, Oh, I'm famous! So, so he's humble. It wasn't like catfish, it was like... I didn't tell you that I'm fish. famous. Yeah, I told you the truth. You turn your attention away from the love of your life to his friend, a thin man with a shock of black hair and wild eyes that never seem to close. Pages and books are scattered across your table, scribbled with complex equations from a class you're sure you never would have passed. The guest's black eyes meet yours, the entirety of his iris on display, as his wide eyes reveal just how incredibly full of frustration they are. With <laughs> David Tennant's wide eyes. Yeah, he's got, like, crackhead eyes. <laughs> Only a little. Glorious weed. Larry, you say tentatively, and your Shotzi looks up at you and smiles. Oh, sorry, honey. Didn't realize you were back. I would have had dinner ready if I'd been paying attention to the time. He's so sweet. <laughs> That's fine, you say, and you mean it. Larry is so thoughtful. These last few weeks have been heavenly, as he happily cooks and cleans whenever he's not on tour. He's also helped redecorate, and his subtle, thoughtful taste in furniture and accessories has created quite a refreshing space for the both of you. But does he say yee-haw during <laughs> sex? Do you want him to? This sounds like it's all a full grave illusion if you're asking me what I want. I'm just, well, this is a second person present tense, so you are the this protagonist. I'm a goddess. It doesn't matter what I want. <laughs> yes, it does. You're a goddess. No. He's created quite a refreshing space for the both of you. Maybe he really could be the one. Who's your friend? Oh, my apologies, the comedian says sheepishly, <sighs> placing a hand on the back of the other man at the table. This is Kilgrave. He's a dear friend that's going to school right now. He was having some trouble with some abstract problems, so I thought I'd help him out. <laughs> well, that's nice. What are you majoring in, you ask Kilgrave. Villainy, he answers simply. 
and you smile, humoring his joke, but Larry is quick to correct you. Oh no, he's quite serious, Larry says, and your face twists in confusion. There are colleges that you only qualify for if you're a fictional character. <laughs> so, are you a fictional character? You ask tentatively. Then Larry smiles, extending his hands to take yours and them. No, silly. I'm a persona created by a man frustrated by his place in life and looking to make himself better. However, because I'm where I'm from, I'm beholden to the stereotypes of that area, meaning I'm trapped in a never-ending hell of y'alls and toilet humor that I created for myself. Is Larry the cable guy breaking down gender binaries? Is that what he's doing? Mm, no. No. What's he doing? He's he's saying that he uh, he has to behave the way that he is expected to behave because he presented himself as being from the south. He's breaking down society's binary. Yes, by tackling stereotypes. But that that being said, I will never escape this prison. But you, you're the one shining light that I have to keep me sane. You are beautiful, handsome, perfect. Hard-working and the best of video games. You are the sun, the moon, and the stars. You are always present, reminding me that there is a sky that I can reach for. There is nothing in this world without you, and I'm so glad to have you by my side. That's so sweet and almost a little scary. You blush deeply, ears and cheeks stained crimson as he leans forward for a kiss. Suddenly, it's dark. You glance at the clock, 4.45. It's Sunday, technically Monday, and you have to be up for work in just over an hour to start off the entirety of next week. Oh. Heaving a sigh, you roll over to face your partner and find the bed completely empty. It was another dream. Your eyelids start to droop about 20 minutes later and you doze off in a large empty bed, eager to forget the painful solitude and redundancy of reality. Why would you do that? <laughs> I was so happy with Larry. Yeah, I wanted to make you think about your relationship with Larry the Cable Guy as an American. We have this idea of who these people are. That's true. We do put, like, celebrities on a pedestal and... On a pedestal in a positive and a negative way. Because we're like, this guy is definitely an asshole. But every single person is a complex person with many different facets of their personality. Right, but people latch on to like, the things they like the most. This is getting deep! Yeah. Where are the butt jokes? Asshole. Hey. This Hi. week, I got um, Kamina from Gurren Lagan. Who the hell do you think he is? I don't know, but I actually don't know. I've not seen that show. Yay! <laughs> Kamina was recommended by Ratio Tile. Oh, that's the same um, guy. Was it? He was in one of mine. Oh, cool. Thank you, Ratio. Uh, and then we have Seth Rollins, which was probably recommended by you. Um, getting yelled at by their boss, and Somewhere in California, which was uh, recommended by Abby Krug, which I just realized that I didn't put that in there. So What's magically, that? somewhere in California, Seth Rollins... So you need to add that, yeah. <laughs> gonna put it right in the beginning. Somewhere in California... No, I can't put that there. Anyway. Why not? Uh, it doesn't work for the sentence. See. California. Scene. Cut to. Cut to somewhere in California. Cut to somewhere else immediately. <laughs> Seth Rollins wasn't a bad guy, but he had to play one, and it was starting to get to him. Sitting down hearing an earful from his boss about how he can't break character during a match was hard to stomach. Dean Ambrose had really gotten hurt in that last match, and they had been friends for a long time. It was only human of him to rush to his side to make sure he was okay. It's not his fault he choked up when the paramedics came in and he had to go out unconscious on a stretcher. He hadn't seen a head wound like that that wasn't from a banned razor blade technique, which was obviously a cause of concern. He knows he's supposed to be playing up a heel at the moment, but his friend was hurt, so sue him. The words from his superior were going in one ear and out the other. He was aware that what he did was wrong and how he needs to keep it together even in the face of a serious injury. But what more could he ask of him? He's only human. This wasn't a scripted event and he figured the lecture was more of a necessity than actual concern. Someone was likely giving them pressure for showing human emotion, which the crowd was normally okay with, but for whatever reason they weren't that night. What a bunch of buttholes! I know, right? Suck it up! Suck it up! In all fairness, Seth had been written as a pretty harsh character in the months leading up to this match. Are we done here? Seth asked as he pulled his eyes from the ground for just long enough to make eye contact with the horn in front of him. I don't know, are we? The authoritarian figure asked. Just as the emotions were about to boil over, two solid raps on the door told the two men that someone was going to enter whether or not they allowed it. What? his boss yelled to the door. With a surprising gust of wind, a shirtless man in a red cape entered with a grand flourish of the excessive material wrapped around his shoulders. His orange sunglasses jutted out of either side of his face with brilliantly blue hair styled perfectly to partially cover one eye. Kamina is showing up. <laughs> so, Kamina, 
the authority said in a bland but welcoming tone. Who's this guy? Seth asked flatly, but with obvious confusion. He's your new tag team partner. The tired figure answered as they leaned back in the office chair behind the desk. I thought we moved me to being more of a solo type guy, Seth snapped back with obvious anger at having to hurt his former teammate because of the decision. Well, the company has decided that you're not holding enough appeal, especially with the most recent situation. He waved a hand as Seth squirmed as if starting to say something. Thanks to a now fired social media intern putting out a stupid poll on the internet who guaranteed we would match you up with the ultimate fantasy tag team, <laughs> we have no choice but to add this guy. How Be glad Hitler came in second. Be glad. How, Be glad. How would they have brought Hitler in? I mean, I, I am curious as to the science hey, of- it's a fanfic. You can't question yeah, it. Yeah, this is my no, fanfic. Why are you trying to judge me? I'm not criticizing. I'm just I curious. I, I have- well, Who I was actually- reasons? I was Somebody... actually bringing that back from someone else. A company tried to do a poll to name a new drink and they named it oh, Hitler. Yeah. So that's where I was pulling that from. Seth sat back, wondering how long it would be before he'd have to turn against this guy too. You're- this can't be real. This guy can't be real, said. Well, he's not. <laughs> Seth said in disbelief. If I may, Kamine chimed in, and the authority gestured him to continue. Kamine turned to Seth and slammed his hands down on either side of him, yelling, Who the hell do you think I am? Seth, surprised at the needless amount of force, responded, I honestly have no idea. Mm. I am the one who can do the impossible. See the invisible. John Cena. He began in shonen speech style. You want to fight Cena? <laughs> Seth asked, confused. You have to go beyond the impossible and kick reason to the curb! Your drill is the drill that will pierce the heavens! You can touch the untouchable, break the unbreakable! You have to believe! Bro, believe bro. in the me that believes in you! Fight the power! <laughs> Coming to said dramatically as he took on various heroic poses. The authority and Seth both looked on in wide-eyed wonder as the red-eyed, smiling figure that had pumped his fist into the air as if his speech had somehow secured him a victory. A few long moments pass before the authority slowly adds in. I think what Kamina is trying to say, I think, is that we know you want to be the best, Seth, and we want to help you get there, even Kamina, but... You have to keep to the script. No matter how insane it gets, and no matter where we go from here, even if things get gruesome, you need to gain your composure when you're out there. That audience out there are your biggest fans and your greatest enemies at the same time. And your personal opinions and emotions can only show up when people are expecting it. Seth lowered his eyes to the ground before looking at Kamina. I'm only human, man. Kamina clasped a hand on Seth's back. Maybe we don't have to be the heroes or villains people expect us to be. The authority piped up. Now wait, but Kamina continued. Maybe we can fight the powers that be to make something better and bridge the gap between absolute good and evil that people knew in the past. Teach them that sometimes life is more complex than that. Kamina looked at the authority with an intensity that had him break. We're already doing that, but we'll try to work on it. Either way, you gotta be able to hold it together better, Seth. Seth and it... <laughs> Seth's initial smile at the prospect of change faded a bit, but Kamina chimed in. Sometimes... You gotta take the blazing sun in your bare hands and endure the searing heat. You gotta be a man's man, sustained by the strength of will. He said, uh, he said as he put a hand out to indicate that he was going to stick it out to the bitter end, whatever that meant for the both of them. Knowing that he was now paired with this guy regardless of his opinion, he took the hand and met his gaze, sighing out, Let's get to work. That was Yay. it. What's that tag team name? Uh, <laughs> I have no idea. Why don't we leave it to the internet? The dicks that They'll pick will something. The heavens. Oh, why? That's because amazing. they're both dicks. Rollins, Rollins, fight the power. Again, I, I didn't really know anything about these characters, and I this is one of those times where like I was writing, pretending that I knew what the things were about, but I didn't. Sometimes you have to. Yeah. So, like, for example, the authority isn't just one person, it's multiple people. So I figured I, that out, like, yeah. halfway through writing, but so then I was like... it was to imagine a group of people saying this exact same thing in unison, so... Please imagine that as being the case the entire time. Fan Fiction Friday! We yeah. did the impossible, we saw the invisible. We wrote the unwritable. We read the unreadable. Row, row, Fan Fiction Friday. Nope. <laughs> Caitlin cannot do she the impossible. She can't do the impossible. She can't, can't even do the possible, because that's quite possible. That was... I've done that. <laughs> Good job, everyone. You've witnessed. Thanks. So, if you want to read these stories without us talking to each other, read. you can go to Archive of Our Own and look up Three Hats, which is the method that we use to pick out our stories. Someone Check want to the, the video description, and you can click the link, and you'll be able to read all those stories that yeah. you just heard. Yeah, be so cool. And more. 
And if you want to make suggestions for what we should pull out of the hats, feel free to comment below. Remember that they all have to be independent of each other, so you can't say, like, Ronald McDonald and the Hamburglar discuss the politics of the meat industry in a abandoned warehouse. Has that been bothering you for a while? Yes. I'm sorry. That whole meat industry situation mm -hmm. has been bothering you? It's yes. been bothering all of us. Meat is meat. That is, that's my slogan. That's a, Glorious that's a statement meat. for sure. <laughs> <sighs> Did you know that burgers are edible? Fun wow. fact. Wow! People don't talk about that enough. No. Awareness. So we hope you've been made aware of that, and we hope that you also are aware that we'll be back next week with more fan fiction and more shame. Lots of shame. Lots of that. We're losing dignity every week. So.